Welcome inside the hot seat with yours truly, Joanne Lewis. Today, another handsome gentleman in front of me. <laughs> this time around is candidate number 15 on the National Alliance League, Mr. Rene Violinas, a household name I would say. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Joanne. Thanks for having me. And Rene, <clears throat> I know you to be in acting, yes. right? You're probably into sports. I used to play basketball a lot when I was a teenager, early 20s. And then when I started in my 30s, it started becoming less. But um, every chance that I get, I still play. I mean, we can, we can probably call so many different things that you, you have been into. Politics? I didn't think so. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, tell us. Yeah, who, is, who, who is Rene, first of all, for the people out there who might not know who Rene Violinas right. is? Well, Rene Violinas... Um, like he said in his introductory speech to the St. Martin audience, has always been a grassroots person. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a father of a four-year-old. Four-year-old. And a two-year-old. And they both keep me on my toes. That sounds like trouble. Uh, yeah. <laughs> they, they are wonderful, uh, wonderful trouble, if you want to right. call it Yes, that. definitely. You know? Good trouble. Uh, yes. And um, apart from being a father, I've been involved in youth work for a very, very long time. Um, in 1995, uh, the late Michael Douglas, myself and Michael Jeffrey started the Bonafide Promotional Foundation, mm -hmm. which gave St. Martin the first interscholastic talent competition of that magnitude. Okay. You know, our shows would be 1,500 to 2,000 people, you know. Well supported. Average, well supported, you know, and the uh, it gave the, the, some, the young people something to be positively occupied with because the preparation period leading up to the show, they were all involved with one another and, and positively engaged. Um, it's a talent competition. And so, um, you know, it was a means of expression for the young people so that St. Martin would get to see who they are, what they're about. Um, I loved interscholastic because of, like you mentioned, all of the arts-related things that I do myself. Mm -hmm. I'm also a poet, mm -hmm. um, an actor. Um, I airbrush. Wow. Yeah. And so I've used those talents throughout the years to keep young people positively engaged. In my district of Sucker Garden, I used to do little workshops with some of the young men in the area, teach them how to airbrush, et cetera, et cetera, you know, and give them something that is a skill that is marketable, you right. know. And um, that's some of the areas that we'll get into, I'm sure, later sure, that are my sure. passions. I need to find out everything about Rennie before he leaves. Okay. <laughs> and I'm down for that. In 15 minutes. Uh, all right. <laughs> So, so continue. Yes, yeah. I'm also an air traffic controller. Mm -hmm. um, I got my license in 1999. Um, went to Curacao to study, came back to St. Martin and uh, did my on-the-job training and became an air traffic controller. Over the years, I became a radar air traffic controller and I am currently a on-the-job training instructor as well as uh, along with my regular air traffic control duties. You love your job? I love it. I love it. So if you get into Parliament, what's going to happen? If I get into Parliament, I'm going to be doing my job <laughs> on a national level. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. That's yes. fair enough. And I, with the expertise that I bring from my training as an air traffic controller, as well as, um, as, well as the ideas, the research that you have to do, I intend to propose um, streams of income for government that the workforce can be small, but it will generate revenue. And that's one of our biggest issues, I think, um, having enough money to patch and to subsidize the various ministries. And that would probably go into the TIAT coffers. Okay. You know? So um, I have an idea of something that I want to do. You know, when you, when you say politics, mm -hmm. you get that kind of negative tone towards yeah, politics yeah. or being a politician. Mm -hmm. With the portfolio you just gave me, it sounds so clean. I don't, <laughs> I don't necessarily believe the fact that politics has to be dirty. It doesn't it, have to be, but I'm saying... And oftentimes people make it that. And that's worldwide. Indeed. And one of 
the things that I've posted on social media over the years is that I've asked for politicians to provide the people with a politics of principle. Right. You know, and everyone who knows me knows that Rene has principles. He's a principled individual. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's what I bring to this realm of politics, the principled part. Okay. And so I intend to remain clean. Well, we need yeah. th that kind of principality <laughs> in government for real. Indeed. So we need to keep you there then. Yeah, indeed. indeed. What are you passionate about? Um, my passions are arts, culture, environmental uh, conservation, or protection through conservation. Um, I'm passionate about young people mm -hmm. and using arts as a form of self-expression. Um, a friend of mine so eloquently and beautifully put it on Facebook, you know, that I'm not given to the braggadocio, to boasting about my accomplishments. But one of the things that um, I was able to achieve in my service area um, was to be a charter member of the Rotary Club of St. Martin Sunrise. Mm -hmm. I became a vocational services director. And uh, through hard work, putting the right people in place, having a good team, we chartered the Rotary Club of St. Martin Sunrise. And it is the longest running Rotaract Club on St. Martin, Martin thus yeah. far. So, you know, those young people are carrying on a lot of the social work within the community, the social networking um, that is required to make our nation strong. Those young people are doing a lot of that work. And so I'm proud to have been a part of that, you know, and to continue working along with young people in the various, uh, various disciplines. I guess it's something that hit you at this given moment to for you to decide that you want to get into politics because to me the accomplishment of being country mm -hmm. in 2010 that was a great time to get involved in politics and i did not see rene there 2014 passed by and rene wasn't there why now i'm glad you brought that up <laughs> uh since 1998 um i've been asked by various leaders of various established parties mm -hmm. uh, to run for elected office. Uh, the best time for me to have run and uh, be successful would have been between that period of 98 and 2003. Okay. I was at the zenith of my popularity. I was the young, uh, dynamic leader of the National Youth Council Association. Um, Very active. I, yeah, I was the uh, youth leader for my church at the then time, Bethel Victory Assembly, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and so I was the Teen Times Young Person of the Year um, in 97, I believe it was. And so, you know, I was in the forefront. It's like almost every week my picture was in the paper. But I was involved with the work on a grassroots level, mm -hmm. in a community level. And for me, the idea of entering politics to achieve what you needed um, did not cross my mind. Uh, subsequently, over the years, I think what has happened is that a lot of the NGOs, the funding, the laws have changed and make the climate really, really tough for the non-governmental organizations to be able to achieve and do what is necessary. So with a person like me entering the political fray, yes. at this point in time, I think I bring um, the bottoms-up approach to the table mm -hmm. in order to be able to say, all right, um, maybe everybody's looking at it from this angle of top down, but this is what we need in order for the NGOs to be able to accomplish and do what they need to do. And function you know? in the right way. Yeah, yeah. So that's one of the reasons. I was also rebuked by an elder. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, she met me outside of Costules and um, she let me have an air full that, are you young people? Are you need to step up and take over? Are you the ones who need to run this country mm -hmm. when they said we got here gone? You know, how and they call so it the mil the millennial the millennial generation. <laughs> well, actually, yeah. the meeting was, I was told that I don't fall into the millennial generation. I missed it by a couple of years. Yeah. I'm generation next. Mm. You know, so. I think we all part of it. <laughs> I think so. So yes, uh, after being rebuked by the the elder, elder. which is um. 
the mother of one of my colleagues, you know, I started thinking. And then the fact that my children, if people like me don't get involved in this process, then there might not be much for them to inherit. Exactly. You know, and so um, that's one of the things that, that, that motivated me to really get involved. You got involved, yes, but why National Alliance? Eight parties contesting. And like I said earlier, I've been asked by so many of them. Mm -hmm. But when um, I analyze National Alliance track record, and I've been around politics for a long time, right. you know, I know the tricks that some of the more established parties use, you know, creating splinter parties in order to attract votes, et cetera, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. So I did a lot of due diligence. I did a lot of analyzing, mm -hmm. you know, um, and, and considered a lot of factors. One of the things that I also looked at is the fact that uh, every time National Alliance gets a chance to govern, no matter how short the period might have been, mm -hmm. uh, nine months, a year and a half, Six whatever. Months. They appoint and put the right people in place mm -hmm. to move things forward, you know, to get things accomplished, to get things done. And that's one of the things that really attracted me uh, to the party, you know, really made me say, all right, well, um, this is where I feel comfortable. Let's give them four years to govern uninterrupted. Let me lend my expertise and my strength to the party in order to make this 10-seat uh, this uh, request or requirement that we have to make things happen, you know, let me get involved with them and, and see if it's going to boost St. Martin to kind of help us um, do what is necessary. With that kind of young energy, we should be able to boost whatever has to boost. Exactly. And so for all the people who have been telling me, Rene, when you're running, when you're going to get on a list, here I am, I'm on a list now, mm -hmm. so you have to do what you have to do. Support candidate number 15 on the National Alliance, the one that you've been asking for and telling to run. Here he is, so please go out and support him. You said that you, you were head of a church, I would put I it the, that way? I was the you youth were, leader, you, you were the youth I was the youth leader, leader of my church then, yes. I know there is a saying, you shouldn't mix mm -hmm. politics with Christianity. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. What are your views, if you care to, about the Christian party being part of this e coming elections? Um, my views on Christians being involved in politics uh, and not necessarily a Christian party are that um, I believe our nation is founded on Christian principles. Uh -huh. um, if you look at the articles and incorporations of all of the political parties, you will see that they claim to be founded on Christian principles. This word I have written here, mm -hmm. I'm going to spell it. Yes. Because if I look at it, R-E-N-E-W-A-L. Mm -hmm. I would say renewal. That's right. What is that all about? Tell me, what's up with it? Well, renewal is my social media play on my name. Okay. Um, R-E-N-E, -E, Renee, mm -hmm. and then you add the wall, renewal, right. you know, and so it's something that's been very catchy, you know, uh, it's working. Very creative, it's I working. must say. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's working. Um, you know, people are, are following the renewal. They're being a part of the renewal. And, you know, people have been saying, oh, we need change. We need this. Yeah. And it is also... A, a word for change. change. Yeah. You know, yeah. after winter must come spring. We've yeah. had the winter of six years of government falling and rising and, and being reformed. And, and so be a part of this renewal. Put a young man in office who you know is going to remain loyal to his party. Mm -hmm. But if he doesn't agree with um, a motion that is brought to the floor of parliament, He's either going to abstain or he's not going to vote for the motion. I don't have to jump ship to get what I need. I agree with that. We need a lot more like you. I believe in lobbying all across the board to get those that are sitting in the opposition benches, quote unquote, um, because with the 15 member parliament, what I had hoped would have happened in 2010 was that we would have formed the broad based government. Mm -hmm. 
and that the bickering and the fighting and the squabbling and the infighting of the past would, would have, have been, been set thing. aside yeah. and that we would have moved forward as a nation. It was a beautiful opportunity. I, I think so. 2010 and also 2014, 14. red, white and blue. Yes. I think that would have been very good for the country. Agreed. But yeah, things happen. That things happen. How do you feel about uh, being part of this electoral process uh, what are your chances what what are some of the things people are telling you you know I'm not talking here family I'm mm -hmm. talking more the general public I'm sure you've been out on the campaign trail already yeah. you know what, what's what's the feedback yeah well I'm already being called a member of Parliament Wow and being called the next minister of Tiat and I'm like um, I'm not sure what the ministerial part uh, sounds good <laughs> would, you, would, would, you, would you like to be a minister I prefer to be in Parliament because I want to create legislation. Yes, yes. You know, and you want to um, be the lawmaker, right? Yes. You know, I, I have ideas for legislation and I want to do my best to move move them on the floor of Parliament and lobby my colleagues to vote for those motions because in my view, once they're analyzed and, and, and scrutinized by the right people, they will work in the best interest of Saint Martin. Rene, you have I would say 10, 15 seconds to talk to the population. Tell them why you think they should vote for you. A hundred and, I think, 56 candidates? 26. 26? Yes. Well, somewhere around there. Yeah, yeah. What is so special about Rene? You tell them. Let them know. Well, Rene is honest. Rene is capable. Rene is competent. Rene has always been grassroots and about you. You know, Rene has worked with your children. You've trusted your children to Rene. Rene has two children of his own. Mm -hmm. Rene wants to see this nation move forward, not become a laughing stock where people for personal reasons do all kinds of things that affect the country negatively. So you know Rene has got your back. You know, Rene is there for the long run. And those are some of the things that I would like people to realize that this is a tough decision for me mm -hmm. in terms of um, putting my very private life public, I would say, <laughs> into the public eye. You know, it, it is a very difficult decision. And so I didn't make the choice lightly. And I am hoping from what I'm hearing so far, mm -hmm. that it is not just lip service, right. but that the people will go out to the polls in numbers, in great numbers, step up to the plate on September 26th, do what is right, and vote white. Vote number 15, Rene Violinus on the National Alliance list. Rene, it was a pleasure. Thank you, Joanne. And all the best. I hope that you would get, you would be part of that mandate. Thank you. Well, folks, you've been looking, you've been listening to In the Hot Seat once more with yours truly, Joanne Lewis. I say, take a listen to all these candidates, hear what their plans are for the upcoming elections, and you make the choice. You make that decision. Until next time, we'll meet again. Bye.